Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Tour de France 23. This is episode 42. We're under the World Championships, but if you saw the last episode, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, that's the episode to go back and watch. Phenomenal race. Five stages. We won four of them. Even the time trial we placed well on. We were in the top 20. And we won the overall. Absolutely amazing stuff. And... As a result, we have huge upgrades as a rider and can now be considered amongst the better riders in the field. You give it another season, we could be winning Grand Tours. But it's not going to be going that far. We do pick up two flat attribute points for winning two flat stages. The first two times we've ever done it. Then we win two flat uh, stages to get two sprint points. Acceleration also picks up two attribute points for that same reason. So now we're at a 75-80. Our ability to win a sprint just got a hell of a lot better. Our mountain rating just went up. We led at the top of a Cat 1, which was the finish line. And we also won our first mountain stage in the final stage. Two attribute points in mountain, suddenly a 79. It was a 73 two races ago. We've picked up six mountain points in two races a 79.3 overall we are no longer a puncher we are now a climber back to where we should have been in the first place i did so well in the time trial but don't get anything from it the finish a team time trial is kind of the key for us to uh, gain anything in the time trial rating any further but stamina plus two we want to race over 200k and a gc Resistance also gaining one, so those are both at 81 now, and our recovery is now an A+. Plus. That combination has left me pretty solid, because now I can climb well. 78, 78, 79 in all the climbing attributes, where we couldn't get up mountains very well at all a short while ago. Those are not the best, but those are the with protected status you can hang in there. And then with the acceleration and sprint that we have, it's so easy to get off the front. And with stamina and resistance that is so high, we can compete for a long period of time. And one of the things that was really holding us back was a terrible flat rating, which just took a big jump from a 70 to a 72. It was, you know, it was in the 60s a couple of races ago. So we finally, finally have a rider capable, not just of being in the top 10 that we've done, but excelling in the top 10. World Championships the sped up for now. The head of the race. So it's a circuit. We're in Dusseldorf. There is a hill, and that hill is going to take its toll. It's also 250 kilometers in length. So we can see a thinned out group. It is absolutely possible. If it comes down to pure sprinters, I'm going to have a hard time doing more than just getting a top 10. But if it's made difficult enough on a hard enough day, I could definitely be in contention for a top five. We have good acceleration, but there's far better sprinters out there. And they're here, of course. It's the World Championships. U.S. team, not going to give me a whole lot of support, but they can absolutely keep me protected. I am the favorite of the group of the U.S. team, so for that, no problem serving as leader here on lap number four. Four riders in the breakaway do not look like a threat. But they were given a pretty healthy advantage. It's already down inside seven minutes, though. And it was definitely higher than that earlier on. So uh, lap six of 13 with a peloton that seems to be under control. Or a breakaway that seems to be under control on a peloton that seems to be comfortable with the current state of affairs. 133k to go. Just about halfway there. Going inside 100k on lap eight. Situation has not changed much at all. Same four riders. Some of them have taken time to kind of sit up and not contribute, but then they end up contributing again after a little while. The gap's down to just four minutes as we head towards the final feed zone, but there's been no reason to use it as the entire team is at full capacity with only four more times up and over this hill. And we're good. Keep working. 65K. 250 the gap. Looks like we are headed for a very straightforward, very simple sprint finish. 
Got a lot of teammates around. I'm going to take the hill a little bit slower each time now to make sure that we aren't facing some sort of new attack. Looks like the breakaway still has some gas left. That one's done. Able to widen the gap. Two to go. Holding at 2.30, but now we're starting to close them down once again. 2.10. Trentin, Seneschal, Wright, Patterson, Lescano, and Cavagna on the attack. Last time checked with a breakaway. One and they've minute. already been... They've already been reeled in. One minute gap to the uh, breakaway still. The final lap of these world championships gets underway. The peloton is well adrift to the lead. Last lap, but there's bell still lap. Left to play for. One the minute gap. Breakaway riders 18k. Coming up on the base of the hill. I'm going to go ahead and get in control. Be near the front. Oh yeah. Cavania gave me a real squeeze there. Shoved me over. He was turning left. Could have turned more left, but he was not having any of it. Only 15 kilometers left before we know the name of the new world champion. I come around to the front, but this is that's not going anywhere. No attack is gonna hold anyone off right now. We dropped two riders. One of the front rider riders has been dropped, but they are still a minute ahead. Okay, Warbase is back in place. I'm going to go ahead and to ride flat out. I'm going to tell Dombrowski to ride flat out and Richitello to ride flat out. Still 50 seconds. Coming up on the 10K banner. I'm going to get myself up in a position now. Do I really have guys going flat out? base has used his okay. red bar and uses gel to refill 6k okay I do have more teammates that have finally come forward 6k let's let's get back towards the front we'll stay in the saddle here the rest of the way and let these guys go max effort still chasing the front three 30 seconds 30 seconds to get to them. Last time over the bridge, that's the last thing that you've got to navigate, and that front group is finally disintegrating, and just 19 seconds ahead. 3.5k. But that felt like that could be a time to attack and get off the front and then just try to hold everyone off. But we are well positioned with 2.5k to go. And we see a big split in the field now. Just 26 riders here. We've got Richitello well placed. It is not always a good idea to be too many in a breakaway, as the others will not necessarily want to cooperate with us. 1.3k. Okay. Uh, Richitello or Warbase? I don't know who's faster. Very close. Following Richitello's attack, getting me inside the final 800 meters, 700, 600, he's out of red bar, get my attack going. I'm going to get a top five. I got a top five. I'll take that. I think I got a top five. Top three were much too fast. Ladies and gentlemen. Philipson has claimed the victory. I got fourth. Philipson, Jakobsen, Ewan. And then I come in fourth. That's a really good result on a pure sprint with the best sprinters in the world all there. Uh, Rich Tello, uh, 13th. Simmons was 14th. Jorgensen, 16th. McNulty was 18th. Warbase was 20th. And Nurowski was 21st. We split the field, but the sprinters were still here. They were at the front. So our little pressure work to an extent it isolated some of those guys and i certainly got myself set up decently with richitello giving me a lead out and me following him it worked but my sprint levels just aren't equivalent of theirs those guys definitely had better pace but hey top five at the world championships beautiful thing is that was worth individual points nothing for the team but individual points Philipson picks up 100 i pick up 85 ewan picks up 90 but I'm seventh. I'm seventh in 
individual standings with one race to go on the season. Il Lombardi, a final race of the season and of the series. We are going to be wrapping things up here in just a little bit. Can we finish in style? Well, so far, there's a battle to get in a breakaway. We are coming up on the first climb of the day and still have not established a breakaway. Another attack. Eight riders, this time not wanting to contest the climb. It's going to succeed. So three and a half minutes out. Breakaway finally forms. 180k left to go. Second climb of the day, but the race really has not gotten interesting yet. Since that breakaway was established, we've held them at about five minutes for the gap. You can see we accelerate a little bit this time, close in on them a little bit, but we're not dropping riders. And even Cockard wasn't feeling it, so things are good so far. Uh, I do want to take a moment though and go ahead and get Bulls already protecting me. Let's get Sivakov protected as well. Let's make this official on protecting me. And maybe we want to protect Johannesson. Just to make sure we have the full team. Long falls flat here. We're already inside 100 kilometers. But a little descent here. We'll see everyone fully recovered. Still got a ways to go till the last feed zone. But we're getting into the hardest section. Two climbs right here. 167 begin the climb. We'll keep an eye on how they're doing. Gap to the front's down to two minutes as we pull them back. Riders are starting to get dropped. But we approach the near portion of the top. Okay. Okay, so everyone's made it over this. We're going to let the descent get some recovery in the legs. I think I'm going to have to use the gel. Actually, why not use everyone's gel, right? Let's see who makes it. Well, I don't have everyone needing the gel right now. Okay, we'll, we'll go part way up. Oh, I feel just split. Johannesson, who was set to... Hold position just got dropped somehow. Game's actually being a little weird. I want him to get back in contact. Leaves Rubio behind. Steepest section of the climb here. Sevkov, use his gel. Johannesson, time to use his gel. At the top of the Muro di Sormano, there will be a little under 50 kilometers left in the race. And to retain any hope of... And time to use my gel. No rider can crest the summit to Ooh, there are favorites that have gotten away. But I have two teammates. Three more teammates just oh, behind that, and there's a lot of race to go. Be patient, we're okay. Sevakov is still here. Johannes and Lopez in the group GS behind us. And there's just six riders up the road. Looking okay. I expected that to be less eventful than it was. But that ended up being a pretty eventful climb. We get Johannesson back. Leave your rider behind, please. Thank you. Feed zone for the front of the race. The road will be far more even over the next 15 kilometers or so. Lopez is back. Okay, good. So we now have 10 riders chasing nine. We want Lopez setting tempo. I want Johannesson to, to protect. That is right to the foot of the next obstacle, the Chivilia. Chase is pretty hard. Lopez isn't even at the front. He does get to the front for a moment, so he's contributing some to the chase. Okay, we've gone through the feed zone. So I'm going to tell Sivakov to gel and Lopez to gel. I'll consume a feed. Got two climbs left. Oh, we caught, we caught the front group. 
It's back together. There you go. Patience has paid off. It's now 19 riders. We have a two minute gap over just two riders and then a four minute gap, uh, gap over the following six, which includes Van Hoek. It is not always a good idea to be too many in a breakaway. As the others will not so Lopez continuing to, to contribute. I'm definitely not going to contribute Ahead when we've got a team member who can do that. Uh, and we'll keep the pressure on. Left, two climbs to go. Two climbs to go. Let's go ahead and take control here. Yeah, Johannesson has suffered a fall at some point. Maybe that's how he ended up out the back that one time earlier. Getting a little acceleration here. Johannesson, Sevakov, both struggling with it just a little bit. Tempo. It's because Yates is attacking. There's Lopez. I'll follow him for a moment. between the favorites group and the front is 30 seconds. Okay, he is done. Jorgensen's going 90. Lopez just couldn't overtake him. Uh, Johannes, no, Sivakov. I'm gonna tell him to go 110 and tell Johannes to protect. Front group's disintegrating. Guys that just couldn't hang with the tempo. And there's Sivakov, so we'll follow him now. Eight at the front, two in between, and then my group. So right now we're outside of the top 10. We've never properly competed with these guys at this highest level. Trying to use my teammate to set it up. And did I just lose Johannesson again? Looks like I did. Looks like I'm down to just Sivakov. Well, he's still got something left. Got myself in position to make up some ground. Yes, Johannesson is dropped. He's the only one out the back at the moment. When Sivakov is down to nothing, that's when I want to move. Try to leave this group behind and bridge the gap. Most of the way to the top. Lutsenko's been dropped from the front group. Sevkov nearly out of energy and is. He sits up. I get trapped to the inside, but I immediately attack. Use that red bar. I am now eighth on the road. Overtaking Pare Pinter. Oh boy, a descent. Oh my gosh, I broke big time, but it was still too late. I was hard on the brakes, uh, but that was a very tight corner. Five at the front, Mataway in between. Seventh place, gap opening behind, 20 seconds. Front six now together. Hey, can we switch gels here real quick? What I'm hurting for right now is the ability to attack. There we go, that gel's done. I have plenty of energy for the final climb. I'm also just seconds behind these guys. I'm about to make contact. And then we'll worry about the red bar. But we're coming up on the final climb right now. So in contact. On way, Champesin. With Trago. Pagacher. Venipol. And Yates. Fourth wheel. Your 
Pass to the gel. That could be a problem here on this last climb. We drop two riders, down to five. Champ is in, still with me. Yates can no longer put his foot down. Then a pull, takes the front. Yates is struggling. A little bit, not too much. Third wheel now. 5.7K. Well, we have come a long ways from where we were just a short while ago during the Tour de France where keeping up with these guys was hopeless. But because of that Tour de France, we've picked up so many attribute points. Bagatcher to the front. I'm out of red bar. I am out of red bar, but I hang with him. We drop Yates. I'm getting a little bit of recovery. Plenty of energy for the final 4.4k. We're going to follow Pagacha for now. Let somebody roll through. Oh gosh, it didn't lock on. I was hoping it would lock on. It didn't lock on. Pagacha has gone forward. Point eight K. Following Pagacher, one point three K. I've got some red bar, but it's not a ton. Getting to the front of this. Where is the right moment? We're coming up on it. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Come on, come on. It's a podium! It's a podium! <laughs> We've won a Lombardia. What a way to end this thing. What a way to end this thing. We've done it. We have done it. I'll be honest, I was hoping for third place. When I saw that there was four of us left and Pikachu had been doing all that work, I was like, he, he's not going to be able to sprint. He's not going to be able to sprint. I, I, I've got to be, be one guy. There's got to be somebody who's exhausted. We've been dropping one rider after another, after another. So I figured somebody has got to be too tired. I figured it was Pikachu who's been at the front the whole time Ladies since just before the top of the final climb. The what a way to finish, though. I claim the win from Avenipol. Pagacher actually ends up getting third. Champesson was the one who was done. Pagacher couldn't go full gas there at the end, but he measured his effort and was able to beat out one rider. But Avenipol and I clearly were the two that had a little in reserve for that final sprint. Avenipol went a little too soon. I measured it right. My red bar lasted right to the finish line. That use of gel late helped. Yates, Adam Yates, by the way, Ends up 52 seconds down, still in fifth. Matawe with Trago, still sixth and seventh. They were just a little bit further back. And then Jorgensen, Moss, Perry Pinter, all those guys that we left behind on that final climb, penultimate climb. It was penultimate climb, right? When we left them behind, they end up about three to four minutes down. Sivakov was 16th. Johannesson was 17th. Not a bad finish for them. Uh, Lopez 24th. Van Hoek 29th. But I pick up 100 points for that victory. Pagatra gets 90 though, so he finishes the year on 1100 and is the individual pro cycling champion of this year. Vingegaard, Avenipol, Van Art. But I jump Phil Philipson at the end for fifth. And Vanderpool for that matter. Fifth place. Fifth in the individual rankings. Considering where we started, that is insane. That is literally <laughs> insanity did not think we would come anywhere near there now two things that i've absolutely learned in this series one medium difficulty pretty doable the harder difficulty not even the hardest difficult second thing i learned huge thing and this is if you play the game the way the game's meant to be played versus how it's done in real life, you'd be a whole lot more successful. I think if I were to employ the team from day one on that harder difficulty, I would get where we're at by this point, 42 episodes in. I think we would be where we're at right now, fifth in the individual rankings a year away from being the top writer. I would have gotten there sooner. I would have had more success early on. But progression would have been measured. 
because of the difficulty level. We wouldn't have found certain races so easy. And so we would have, you know, had more of a, a straight ascension where this time we just, we, we, we lumbered, we, we struggled and then all of a sudden took off. Right. I, th I think the, I think I can handle that third difficulty level from the get-go. I, I would just need the team. I would need to employ the team. Now, if I did this difficulty, we would have been there much sooner than this. Good 20 episodes sooner. We would have been fifth already and progressing. Normal difficulty, the game is fairly easy. Not crazy easy. I mean, your attributes are still a huge factor in how well you do. How do you progress the attributes, though? You have to use... You have to employ the team. You have to get help from them to find some success. You need somebody to lead you out, even if you're not the strongest guy, which is silly. Doesn't add up like that in real life, but that's how you make those kind of gains. Which to do next time? I don't know. I don't know whether to go for the third difficulty level, play it harder, but use the team from the get-go. I think using the team from the get-go is the way. If I play this difficulty and use the team from the get-go... Um, I think we find a lot of success and early and progress by this point, 42 episodes in, I mean, if we're fifth now with such a slow start that we had, I, th I think we would easily be winning this year and be rated a lot higher than a 79. With that as a team, we jump over a thousand points. Uh, we were already over a thousand more. We thousand and three, but we keep sixth place and comfortably with that victory, Finishing the Jero de Como, I get a medium mountain point. I win a medium mountain stage, so I get a point for that. And win Jero de Como. So I pick up three points in medium mountain. That's an 81 now, making me pretty damn effective there. Stamina and resistance also picking up a point for that same finish. So percentage-wise, just look at it percentage now. We're 75, 80, 84, 83, 89, 76, 47... 56, 97, 87. What's that one point left? Become world champion, which we got fourth, right? 87, 61. Cobble rating, time trial rating. That's where we didn't gain enough. 100%, 95%. Pretty good way to finish, huh? Pretty good way to finish. 79.7 rating overall in the end. And quite capable heading into a final season, especially on this difficulty level. And I think we would do a whole lot more. I think we could be champion next year. I think we could win the Tour de France potentially, potentially, potentially next year. 79 mountain rating is not quite there. But by the time you reach the Tour de France, if we picked up those couple wins, what would we need mountain rating wise to, to get a little more? Uh, you have, so you win a mountain stage. You win two more stages, we're at an 81. That's... Like, if we could win two more mountain stages between the start of the season and the Tour de France, I think that would be enough to go on and compete for at least a podium at the Tour de France. That's where things get interesting. Well, things already got interesting this year. That is going to do it for this episode, this season, this series. I'm glad, because the last two years ago was the first time I ever tried the Tour de France game. And I'll be honest, I hated it. Hated it. It was so buggy. It did not work the way it's supposed to work. It did not save the way it's supposed to save. Last year I played just a little bit. Came in with less expectation. Just wanted to enjoy it, present it. This year, I was like, okay, I'm going to do a series. Like I figured out the real oddities that this game has to make it actually work. And while it's got its flaws... And I definitely am a PCM player, Pro Cycling Manager. That's where it's at for me. I prefer that over TDF. Elements of it. Getting to play. I, I do enjoy it. And I would love to see a blended PCM TDF game where this is your Pro Cyclist mode and Career Mode is, you know, the other one. Uh, would love to play that combination factor. Uh with a full calendar and not just this little rinky dink partial calendar that they have here. Um, PCM offers so much more than TDF does, but the racing element is pretty cool. 
I would much rather see them have one really solid game that does both of these things than what they have. But that being said, I'm glad I'm glad I did this. Definitely had a lot more fun with it, and I will definitely be bringing it back for TDF 24. Uh, the more you as an audience get into it, the more it follows. If it gets anywhere near matching the PCM uh, level of audience that I have, or as the channel grows, exceeds it, then I'd be happy, happy to make a full year run of this to go all the way to the end. We're not that far from it now, right? We've got most of the attribute points here at this stage. There's still some more out there to gain. I like this system in most ways. Most ways I like this system. I don't care for the fact that you have to use your team to find success when you aren't good enough to be a leader. But, you know, I adapted and I'm glad I did. I should have caved in on that sooner. Um, thank you for pressuring me on that in, in the comments if you're among those who, who did. But all in all, this will definitely be back next year. And the more the audience for it grows, the more work I'll put into this, the more it can be a two series type thing or a one lengthy all the way through the year type series, whatever the case may be. But great start three years in. Looking forward to bringing you more Tour de France uh, next year. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.